Okay, welcome. Um, today I'm going to do uh, installation of a rear disc guard, rotor guard, shark fin, whatever you want to call it. Um, we're going to do it on this 890, but the process is basically identical from the little moto bikes, 350s, 500s, um, 690, 701, on up to this 798, 90, 901 platform. Um, the tools might be a little bit different, but overall the process is literally identical. So first, uh, tools that we need for this particular bike, um, socket for the axle nut. Um, this is inch and a quarter. I'm sure it's a metric size, but that's what fits this thing perfectly. Um, you need an uh, eight millimeter socket and a 12 millimeter socket. The 12 millimeter has to be a deep socket. Otherwise you need to use an open-ended end wrench. You'll see why in a moment. Um, Torx bits T25 on a screwdriver. It doesn't have to be on a screwdriver. You could use a ratchet, a uh, socket base T25 if you want, um, and a small flathead screwdriver. Um, and then the rotor guard in question right here. Um, and we're gonna replace, this is a full one piece design. So it's the entire caliper carrier. So this caliper on the factory carrier here, we duplicate that carrier section up here and then add this. Uh, portion to guard for all of you that uh, like to go crashing and banging on these big bikes. All right, some people think this is a bit of a daunting task. Uh, I'm here to tell you it's a piece of cake. Uh, if you can remove your rear wheel, um, you shouldn't have any trouble with this at all. So step one, remove the rear wheel. So we'll pull the axle nut here. Again, that was a that's an inch and a quarter. And there's that. Man, I usually just jack the bike up just enough so that the rear tire can spin freely. No higher than that, otherwise you're fighting it. Um, so nuts off, pull the axle. Right there. Then push the wheel forward. Here we go. Sprockets off, just sits to the left. There's a corrugated, um, kind of fits the chain on the plastic chain guard there. You set the chain on that and pull the rear wheel out. You gotta kinda, don't lose your wheel spacers. All right, next step. All right, so here's the uh, the uber complicated part. All right, first eight millimeter, pull the um, the uh, ABS, you know, trash control sensor here. That's eight millimeter socket. Sensor comes out, set that to the side. Next up, pull the brake pads. This is where it can be a little different for each bike, but at the end of the day, there's always gonna be a pin in the rear of the caliper here that holds these brake pads um, in place, allows them to move in and out. Um, to get this particular pin out, we've got a clip on the left side and then we have a threaded T25 Torx on the other side. So, first thing we'll do is grab my little flathead here um, and pry up this clip. All right, clip comes off, at which point, we can take a T25 and unscrew this pin. And once we back it out to where the threads end, at that point we can push, push the brake pads up and pulls the pin right out and the brake pads are gonna fall out. So just grab a hold of them and take them out like so. At this point, your caliper will come off it's it's it floats here on two pins um so all you gotta do is push it to the right and off the bike and there you go try these pins are greased you know here and here try not to lay them in dirt dust you can wipe them down um reapply some grease if you'd like um and here is the caliper carrier and the two things we need to steal from this thing we need this piece of metal that the, the brake calipers 
sit in like this and then they float inside this uh, piece of steel and this pin right here. So to get this pin off, 12 millimeter, I'm gonna use a deep socket on it. You could also use an end wrench. Okay, pin, set that aside. This guy here is just uh, held in by these little tabs. They're just kind of latched on there. So there's that. And that is your factory caliper carrier, which will be discarded. All right, here is uh, your new rotor guard right here. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it on this keyway here like so, and then we just reinstall the components. So, we take the little uh, stainless spring clip here that the calipers float in, and just clips right on there. And if taking that off, sometimes you bend those tabs, they can get bent and they're not hugging it very tight, and if that's the case, you can you can re-bend them down just a little further to, to grip, um, onto the product you're installing it on. So there it's in place. This guy's back on here. And then we'll take uh, and reinstall this pin that we removed from the factory caliper carrier. Um, I put a little bit of Loctite on this, just a medium strength thread locker. So, nice and tight. Um, and you can see on this pin here, there's a just a, a bump right there and that's for the seal for that sealing boot to it needs to go over that bump so when you slide it on there you got to kind of push the seal and work it over the top of that and that way uh it seals from any dust or debris getting in here um as the uh, rotor pads wear um you know the, this thing is floating and so it's it moves slowly along these pins as the as the brake pads wear out um and it's the same story on the back side here we have another seal um, you can pull it off and we can stick that inside that hole, just like that. And then when we put that on again, it's got this bump here. Um, that we want to make sure that that seal goes over to the other side of it. Um, again, to keep dust or debris out of it. Okay, so now we've got our rubber booty there, one there, uh, the two pins, and you just kind of line this thing up so it's parallel and slide it on there, on the two pins, and then we'll work that seal over that bump. So that one's good. Let me check the front one here. Get that worked over there. Perfect. And then our caliper, you know, floats on those pins like that. Okay, next up. Um, if you're putting new ones on, you'll need to, uh, you know, push the pistons back um, to make room for your rotor to go in there. But this end sits in that um, little spring steel piece uh, that we put on there that the calipers float in. Um, so you can put that in there and put the other one in the other side. You gotta kinda hold both of them up at the same time and run our pin back through there. Nice and tight there. We have this redundant safety feature with the with this clip. 
pop the clip back onto that pin so you can't come out. And then you wanna work your brake pads all the way, um, as far apart as you can from each other. So you have enough room to get your, uh, to get your rotor in there. So that looks pretty good there. Make sure they're all the way open from front to back. Then put your sensor back in place. Um, you can use the factory screw to put it back in. Um, it's not included with this product, but the um, it is an option on the website for, uh, this is made by Moto Minded, a 3D printed piece um, that kind of holds this, uh, the ABS wire um, sensor tucked in and out of the way of uh, sticks, debris, etc. cetera. So, um, and they provide a longer bolt there for that. So we'll go ahead and put that on there. I'll put a little bit of Loctite on this. There's that. Now we just put the rear wheel back on and button it up. And this is probably by far the hardest part of the install. Working this tire into here. Make sure it's straight up and down. I'm gonna bring the camera over here to show hard to see there's a small groove where these bolts that hold the um this sensor ring onto the wheel for the sensor to read these slots um, and those bolts need to go through a, a channel there to keep clear of the rear discard you don't have to pay attention to it once you bolt it on and get the axle in there but to actually get the wheel in there sometimes you have to pick up the rear wheel or rotate it such that you miss uh, you don't want to run into the sensor. Um, and at the same time, keep the rotor. And there we go. Looks like the bike's a little high, so I'll lower it just to get the axle started. And through the rotor guard and through the other side of the swing arm, but not far enough in to uh, prevent pushing the wheel forward so we can get the chain back on. And then once your chain's on like that, then we can push the axle all the way in. So we're up against the, the, the axle stop bolts like that. Like that. The nut on and then push your rear wheel all the way forward. So we're up against those um, axle block stop screws. And we tighten that up to the factory torque spec and that's it, we are done. Piece of cake.